Welcome to EM Cases Rapid Reviews, where we review the take-home points from the EM Cases main episode podcasts so you can ace your exams and take stellar care of your patients. Hello, everyone. I'm Nick Claridge, and welcome to another edition of Emergency Medicine Cases Rapid Review. Today, we're going to talk about a super common ED presentation, asymptomatic hypertension. This may seem a bit benign, but it's not. It's the most important preventable risk factor for cardiovascular disease and death, and we see a ton of it. It's the number one risk factor for death in the world, so we got to know what's necessary. There's a wide range of practice among ED physicians, so let's clarify some things. We'll start with a simple and easy definition, then pick out some key points on history and physical, and then decide what investigations and treatments are necessary, or even none at all. How many times do you read this on the triage note? Patient took their blood pressure in the pharmacy, they noted it was high, came to the ED for an evaluation. They're feeling off, but denies any symptoms. And you read the triage blood pressure, and it's 184 over 113. So what is this? Hypertensive urgency, hypertensive emergency, severe hypertension, malignant hypertension, poorly controlled chronic hypertension. It can get really confusing. So let's simplify. There are true hypertensive emergencies, aortic dissection, preeclampsia, and hypertensive encephalopathy, just to name a few. And in these cases, aggressive blood pressure control is essential to limit morbidity and mortality. There are other cases that aren't so clear, like this one. But all you need to know, is this a hypertensive emergency or not? And in order to figure this out, you can ask yourself three questions. Is there acute end organ dysfunction and or damage? Is the dysfunction attributable to the elevated blood pressure? Or will the elevated blood pressure make the dysfunction worse? And is altering the blood pressure necessary to improve the organ dysfunction? If the answer is yes, then it may be a hypertensive emergency. If not, these patients with high blood pressure can be treated on an individualized basis less aggressively. One thing I've wondered was, does the initial blood pressure at triage correlate with outpatient hypertension? And it turns out it's not the first blood pressure reading, but an elevated blood pressure reading one hour later that actually correlates quite highly with outpatient hypertension. So keep that in mind, that that patient with initial elevated blood pressure at triage may need a repeat and it can't always be attributed to anxiety or pain. So now you're in front of this patient who has taken their blood pressure at the local pharmacy. What do you need to ask them? You're gonna to wanna to ask them a few key questions to identify potential causes of the hypertension. Does this patient have a history of hypertension? Are they compliant with their medications or any medication changes? Do they have any recent triggers like a high salt diet, alcohol use, NSAID use, new steroids, or decongestants? Are they pregnant or are they postpartum? And when was the last time they had their BP checked? As this could just be chronic hypertension that does not require any acute management. Next, you want to use an organized approach to screening, going by organ system. Start with the brain and inquire about early signs of encephalopathy, such as headache, nausea, vomiting, or some mild confusion. Ask about localizing symptoms that may indicate a stroke. Next, move to the eyes and ask about vision changes, then to the heart for looking for signs of MI, dissection, or CHF and finally the kidneys for symptoms such as polyuria, nocturia, and hematuria. But keep in mind those patients under the age of 30 with hypertension. And think about secondary causes such as renal artery stenosis, Cushing's, and phaochromocytoma. The physical exam is largely guided by the symptoms, but you may also be able to pick up on important clinical clues to end organ damage with no obvious symptomatology. As with the history, take a system-guided approach, checking the brain for signs of stroke or dysfunction, Next, check the eyes. And I know it's not always practical in a busy ED and sometimes hard, but the more you look, the more you'll pick up on. Grab the pen optic and check the fundi for acute retinal hemorrhages, exudates, and papilledema. And lastly, a cardiovascular exam is important to look for signs of CHF or dissection. You've assessed the patient for end organ damage. There's none. Do we need to keep this patient in the ED longer and investigate further? You wouldn't be wrong if you didn't do anything. According to the ASEP guidelines, no workup is needed. But remember, you may miss 6 to 7% of clinically meaningful findings. So consider screening tests on select patients. There's a couple ways you can do this. One, you can screen with a urine dip for renal dysfunction, then follow that up with blood work if it's abnormal. But you're looking at about an 80 to 90% sensitivity, so you could miss some things. Or you can just get the blood work and check the renal function. And if the hypertension has been chronic, consider an ECG to look for LVH because this may need an outpatient echo. Now, you've done a good history and physical exam and discussed with the patient about potentially getting some investigations, 
And the patient's like, it's all great, doc. My blood pressure's still high. Can you lower it for me? And you're thinking, oh man, should I lower this? They're completely asymptomatic with no signs of end organ dysfunction. Is there a target that I should be aiming for? Am I actually going to cause some harm to the patient by lowering their blood pressure? Truth is, there is no target. There's not a lot of evidence to suggest any benefit in the short-term outcomes. There is some evidence to suggest that there is a reduction in risk of morbidity and mortality in the longer term, but there is no need to immediately reduce an asymptomatic patient with high blood pressure. However, the Canadian Emergency Medicine Cardiac Research and Education Group advised ED physicians to consider beginning antihypertensive therapy for patients with a blood pressure over 180 over 110 and to initiate treatment if the blood pressure is over 200 over 130. These recommendations are based on limited evidence and there is no guidelines for the exact target of blood pressure that needs to be achieved before discharge. So the answer is, you can choose to do either. Lower the blood pressure in the ED or just refer back to the GP. Just remember, do not drop the blood pressure rapidly as it alters end organ perfusion and puts patients at risk for organ underperfusion, especially if their blood pressure elevation has been chronic. So you've decided to treat the hypertension. What are your options? Most patients can be started on a thiazide or an ACE or an ARB or a calcium channel blocker. There are a couple exceptions. For patients with coronary artery disease, a beta blocker is first line. And for African American patients, cardiac risk reduction is best achieved with a thiazide or calcium channel blocker. And the other important part is to arrange follow-up. Most clinicians recommend following up within seven days or more urgently for patients with severe hypertension. And those started on an ACE or an ARB should be followed up sooner with lights checked roughly in one week. So let's recap. All that matters is, is this a hypertensive emergency or not? To help determine this, you can ask yourself three questions. Next, perform a history and physical trying to tease out if there's any end organ damage. If you want, you don't need to do any blood work or investigations, but I think that most people will be getting basic blood work to check electrolytes and renal function, especially if you're thinking about starting them on an antihypertensive. You also might want to consider an ECG to look for LVH. Lastly, the choice to treat is your own. But remember, there is no target, and do not drop the blood pressure rapidly. That's all for now, and see you again next time. Mm-hmm.